Alright guys, so today we got a really special video because we have the Saturn 3 Ultra which is the latest greatest from Elegoo. So the Ultra came packed very well as usual and these are all the parts out of the box. So we do get a manual, it's very nice and useful, we got pictures, everything included, all the parts of the machine, the specifications, leveling and software. So yeah, quite a detailed little manual and great to go through. And also we get a leveling card which we'll be using to level the build plate. Speaking of the build plate, it comes actually in two pieces. We got the knob with the bolt. The Ultra here uses the older style leveling which has four bolts. And I'm guessing they went to this system as it's more durable compared to their usual ball and probably more secure. But the build plate still is tapered nicely so the resin drains down and everything is heavy duty aluminum. And underneath we do have a protector here if we peel the corner we can see the finish on it so it is a slight texture but very fine and quite an interesting pattern and here it says to press firmly down on it when we're going to level which we'll do here in a bit and then the knob screws in on top here on the arm here we can see the cover and this is a dark look which is quite unique then we normally see, and yeah, you guys can see it's quite nice looking and yeah, just tinted darker. And this is good to protect the prints from UV light and also keep the smells in. And in the back here, you guys can see we do have a little door for an exhaust fan if you wanted to exhaust the fumes out. Definitely love the theme so far on this Ultra. So in this toolkit, this is where everything's gonna be. And you guys can see it's quite full. So we get some gloves and you wanna wear these if you're gonna handle a resin, a USB, thumb drive. Here we get a carbon filter that goes inside the printer and we'll install this a bit later. A plastic spatula scraping in the tub. A metal spatula and this is going to be scraping the models off the build plate. Don't use this one inside the tub. We also get a little antenna and this is going to connect to the printer as it does have Wi-Fi capabilities. We do get some Allen wrenches and extra bolts. Strain filters and you're going to use this to strain your resin when you're pouring it back into the bottle or anywhere else that you need to filter and they do include quite a few of them. You also get a couple masks that you might want to wear when you're around resin. And here we have the power supply. It's quite large and it is a 24 volt, 7.5 amps with 180 watts. And we do have a little light here indicating power. Now in this little box, you guys can see it's labeled US and this is going to be the power cord that plugs into the brick. So one end is going to go into the wall and the other into the printer. But yeah, that's pretty much everything except for a card here that is for the Tango Slicer Voxel Dance. And it is free lifetime there you can see. So it's a license to get the Tango Slicer. All right, so let's take a closer look at the Ultra here. And yeah, I'm loving the whole dark theme. Printer looks great. Even this cover adds a lot of darkness to the whole vibe. So yeah, pretty cool. So the antenna actually connects here on the side and all you gotta do is just screw it in and then it does pivot around and you can find where the brake is here to make it go up like that. So, And while we're over here, we can see that this is where we're gonna plug in our power supply on and off switch, the Wi-Fi antenna and the USB port, which our thumb drive will plug in. But what's interesting is that they chose to use yellow here, unless it's just kind of a randomized color. That's all the ports here on the right side. So I do love the whole front as it's just this nice 
flat glass look. I think it's plastic, but it does have a clean sheen to it. And our screen is right in here, which will power on here in a second. But yeah, very nice theme with the dark gray. And this is all plastic. And as we go up, we get into metal or aluminum, should I say here for the upper portions. So the bed is held on with these two bolts. And you do want to pull them out because they will fall out if you're going to flip this thing around. We do have a pour spout on one of the corners, which is nice. And there's also little handles to pick it up from both sides. And we can see we got a matte kind of film underneath. And this is kind of a film that releases much easier and for quicker printing and just more reliability. But yeah, the, I like how the bed is not too thick. We've got a max fill line there. And on the bottom, you guys can see the bolts where you can replace the film. And underneath, you guys can see we have little feet as the bolts, and this keeps it from touching the ground when you set it down. So the film doesn't get dirty or stuff on it. And also it lines it up here on the base where it just falls in. So we do have a screen protector. Let's go ahead and peel that off. So this is a very large mono screen, 12K resolution, and I can't wait to see what kind of prints come out of this thing. So if we go towards the back, we can see there's a port here or a plug. If we pull that out, that's going to be a 24 volt USB interface. And this is going to be for this guy here, which is the carbon filter. The printer only comes with one, but you can have two because there are two plugs on each side where these filters plug in. So going to the Z construction, one thing to note is everything is very beefy and simplified. Our bed slides onto here and then we tighten it down with this knob. We do have two linear rails and most importantly, we do have a ball bearing elite screw, which is very accurate and precise. And if we look towards the top, we can see that there's this plastic piece and the elite screw goes in there and it kind of keeps it straight. So if we go to the left side, we see it's just clean here. So flipping the printer around, we can see on the back, we got a pretty chunky Z axis and it's all aluminum. Very nice clean and then going down here to the base we have two large exhaust ports and looks like there's some filters behind there in the middle We have the manufacturing label which tells us some basic info about the printer and flipping on one of the sides We can see the bottom we do have these nice squishy rubber feet and all clean under here Which is pretty impressive the printer doesn't really have much holes anywhere except for the back there very interesting All right, so I got the power cable here and let's go ahead and plug it in on the side And it powers up, you guys can see the screen lit up. And our USB here is flashing. And there it goes. So it's pretty quick boot up time for the Ultra. Now what's unique about the Ultra also is that it is running on a Linux operating system, which is kind of cool. And if we look at the screen, not sure how well you guys can see, hopefully pretty good. This is an IPS touch screen with really high resolution. All the icons look super clean and crisp. And we're gonna go through all of the menus here in a second. Let's go ahead and click tools, manual. And I'm gonna click on 50 millimeters and go up with our Z axis so we can pull this foam here out. There we go. So let's take a closer look at the screen. So we got print, tools, and system. And up there we can see we got a couple icons. Looks like USB port and Wi-Fi is not connected. So if we click on print, it's gonna let us choose between USB, a local file, and history. Maybe we need to be a little darker. Yeah, USB is gonna read um, naturally the USB port on the side, which nothing is on there surprisingly. We got a local file and that's what's internal memory and nothing's there also. And history, it looks like there was something printed here, probably a test from the factory. So let's go back. Here we have tools where we can manually move Z axis up and down and home it. Tank clean, which is gonna completely open up the UV lights on the top. We got stop set to zero. So that's gonna set the offset of where the Z axis is. And we'll go through that in a bit with the bed leveling. And here we have screen exposure. And that's gonna allow you to expose a image on the top between text, the grid, and full screen wide open. So going back, we got systems, languages. It is on English. But here you can see we have quite a few different ones available, which is pretty cool. Let's go back. We got Wi-Fi, system settings, device information, a voice that's actually off. I wonder what that's gonna do. Format files. So it looks like you can format the USB straight from here. Okay, yeah. We're gonna ask you to confirm or cancel. I guess we'll cancel. And you can also format the local drive too. Service. And this is how you can contact the company. So yeah, version upgrade. I guess this is going to be like an update. We probably need to connect first. So let's go ahead and try that with the Wi-Fi. And there we go. So it pulls up some Wi-Fi's available in the area and we're gonna find my Wi-Fi and then enter the password. So once we've entered that, we're gonna click on confirm 
and it's gonna try to connect and it's connected wow that was quick all right so now we do have Wi-Fi so let's check for an update network update all right so it's, it's not supported I'm guessing maybe the network hasn't connected and probably when we connect it to the slicer the printer will be able to know if there is any upgrades available but yeah overall very intuitive and very clean display a little small maybe I wish it was a tiny bit bigger but not complaining as it's very nice and clean but the font is on the smaller side but overall not too bad for these main buttons all right so for the next part let's go ahead and install our build plate we do need to peel off the protector so let's do that and this is a really nice laser edged finish. So our knobs are already installed here on the printer and all we're going to do is just slide the build plate into the arm. So once it's in all the way, I'm going to tighten it up. I'm going to grab our leveling card and put it underneath between the build plate and the screen. I'm going to grab the larger allen wrench and we're going to unscrew these four bolts or I guess untighten them. And so your build plate should move around up and down very freely. Make sure it does this before you do anything else. So then we're gonna go to tools, manual, and we're gonna click on home or back to zero. And that's gonna bring it down. And you guys can kind of see it compresses. And there is a little beep, and that must be that voice that we selected, so. But uh, yeah, now it's sitting flat. And all you gotta do now is just push down on the bill plate. Make sure it's flat and your card is underneath and tighten these bolts back up. And I would recommend do one in the front and then one in the back on the other side as you're pushing down on the plate. Don't push too hard, but you know, a decent amount. And now I'm gonna snug them up. And that should be good right there. So now we're gonna select 0.1 millimeters and then go up. So it went up just a bit. Not enough though to pull our card out. Let's do it again. Not yet. And there we go. So maybe I'll go one down. So once you get it slightly high enough where you can pull the card out, what you can do is go around and check how close you are everywhere on each corner with the card. So if it's reasonably close, as in it pretty much feels all the same, it should be good enough. On mine, it does appear that this front side is maybe slightly higher. So what I can do is put my card in like this, not all the way through, home it again, Loosen this front bolt and then push down on this corner and tighten it back up. So let's go up again three times and our card is loose and now we can check again. So it does seem like it got a little better. You won't be able to get it super perfect as the way these four bolts work is it's really hard to bend it one way or the other. This is why, in my opinion, the ball is actually better for leveling where you can get it more precise than this kind of mounting. But for sure, once you get this right, you'll never have to touch it again. Compared to the ball, you might, you know, knock it off or it can more easily be disrupted. In any case, if you feel pretty good about it, I think mine's pretty darn close. You're pretty much done with the leveling. Now, there is one thing to consider as you start printing. If you do have an elephant foot or you're too close and you wanna go up a little, what you can do is add more paper to this leveling card to go up, but that's more, you know, harder on this kind of mount. So what you wanna do is use the set to zero in the software and hopefully I'm zoomed in here enough where you guys can see, but if you go back to home, which is the zero, so that's completely home. And this is where it's gonna start every time you start a print. But if you want to move it up a bit, you're gonna choose you know, your increments. Obviously 0.1 would be the way to go. And let's say you want it 0.1 higher, you would raise it 0.1 and then go back to click this set to zero. So it's gonna ask you to confirm and then you're gonna confirm it and that's gonna save it. So because we offset it at 0.1 higher and saved it, now it's gonna start every print with 0.1 higher than the home. But the confusing part is if we go back to the home, it's actually gonna go down lower than what you set it at, at the 0.1 higher. So it only goes up 0.1 higher when it starts printing. Home is always at the very bottom where you level your bed with the card. But I'm gonna set it back to where it was, which is at zero. So let's just set the home here now, confirm. And so now it's gonna start from where we leveled it. All right, so we're gonna raise this thing up as we are done with the leveling. And we can go ahead and install our tub, which just falls in. Clamp it down with these little bolts. And we're pretty much ready to print. Now, we can go ahead and install our carbon filter here, which is activated carbon. 
and it comes with a little paper here that shows all the details and how to access the carbon itself which is inside here and it just clips apart and on this guy you can see there's a little fan in there and this plugs into the printer but in here we have another cartridge which is in its own box here and this is where our carbon filter is and you guys can kind of see it so you don't really want to touch that as it'll get pretty dirty so but yeah, I like how they enclose it in another capsule. I think you'll just change this whole piece or you might just be able to buy the carbon. But in any case, it's quite simple. And this clips back together. And then all you gotta do is plug it in here on the side like we saw earlier. And it should start working when we start our print. And you can have two of them if you wanted to buy an extra one for even more power to neutralize the smells. All right, so for the next part, let's go ahead and pour some resin inside the tub and make sure you guys understand you know there's harmful vapors here coming from resin we are using water washable 8k from elegoo so this is a little less potent than non-water washables but still you have to take precautions and make sure you're in a well ventilated area and wear your protective gear the mask the gloves i'm not wearing gloves right now because we're just pouring it in but once we start handling the models we definitely going to need to put our gloves on so polymers inside the resin need to be shooken up a bit so usually twirling it works pretty well and make sure you know they're all combined well but don't vigorously shake it as you'll put a lot of air into it yeah all we're gonna do is we're just gonna pour it in into the tub and this is a darker gray which looks really nice and you're gonna need quite a bit of this stuff as the tub is quite large so we should be able to get about halfway it looks like and we'll close this up right away as if we have any extra for later, we'll pour it back into this container through a strain filter. And so we did everything we need to do and we're ready to print. So for the next part, let's go to the computer, see if we can't slice something ourselves since there was nothing included and also send it wirelessly from there through the Wi-Fi here that's available on this printer. All right, so here we are at the computer and I got the thumb drive plugged in and sure enough, there is nothing inside of it. So yeah, let's move this to the side and we'll go to voxeldance.com slash tango and this is the card that was included with the printer that you can download and here you can see it's for Windows or Mac and this looks like a pretty cool slicer with lots of features. And yeah, if you wanna use this slicing program called Tango, it is included with the Ultra. Now, if you were going to download it, you probably should consider downloading it from Elegoo instead of here as here you might not get the latest or compatible version with the printer and if we go to the Elegoo site here we are at the Saturn 3 Ultra also great presentation here 12k resolution refractive light source 4 gigs of RAM with Linux operating system wireless transfers so yeah this printer's got it all guys and probably and we also got Mr. Jesse here the most useful part here would probably be this comparison between the three ultra and the three and for a hundred dollars more you really get quite a few things here so we get 10 more millimeters on the z axis build volume we're also running on linux instead of the single chip system we get much higher speeds at 150 millimeters an hour ips capacitive touch screen which has a very nice resolution ball screw dual linear rails we get the afc release film compared to the pfa and also wi-fi capability compared to just usb also we have refractive light source instead of the Fresnel collimating light source so yeah and also the four point leveling is different than the ball jointed level that we're used to from Elegoo so they kind of went to the old school four bolt style that should be more stable and durable over time so but yeah other than that they're kind of similar but very different in many ways in any case since the thumb drive didn't come with anything what you want to click on here is support and then on download or download and right in the middle here you guys can see 3d print related products firmware manual software we're going to click on this and then here we can see all of the printers that Elegoo has and if we scroll here all the way down we can see the saturn 3 ultra we have manual book, slicing software, and printing tests. So under slicing software, we have a couple options. So we can download the Tango slicer, which was included, and your license code is on that card. Depending on what system you are, you're gonna download it here. But if you're like me and you've used Cheetah Box for many years, you probably wanna go with that. And so this is what we're going with. So depending on your system, you got Linux, Mac, or Windows, you're gonna download it by clicking this button and then saving it to your computer. So after it downloads, you're gonna open it up, which is a DMG file, and then I'm simply gonna just drag the G2 box into applications, and it's gonna install it. 
Simple as that. And now we can go ahead and open it up. Right, and try to fit this thing in the recording window. So this is what the Chitu box looks like. And the first thing you wanna do is click on settings. And as you guys can see, I have the Elegoo Saturn 2 here. So if you click on this plus button, you can add a new printer. We'll go to Elegoo and we'll scroll down until we find the Saturn 3 Ultra. Select that and there's actually a little picture showing the printer. Click OK and now all of our parameters are preset including everything here with the detailed parameters for exposure times, speeds, things like that. So yeah, everything's here that we need and we have some advanced features here with anti-aliasing if we want to use any of this, but we'll just leave it the way it is and print the way it comes preset from the factory. So once you're done here, you're gonna exit and now we're ready to slice something. So since this is an Elegoo machine, let's go ahead and start with a Rook as this is a definitely tradition for this printer. I'm gonna zoom in here a bit. So we can see our building surface here. If you click on the model, it'll select it and you have some functions here like move and you can grab these arrows and move it or you can just grab the model and move it. It. Or you can enter it here manually in millimeters. Also click center, it'll center it back up. We can rotate it also just by dragging it. Again, manually enter everything here. Reset, scale it so we can make it smaller or bigger. Reset that. And we have mirror also here. So now up here we have a few more things like alta layout. If you have multiple items, it'll kind of lay them out automatically. Hollow, which is quite useful if you're gonna print something large and you wanna hollow it out. And then also we got dig hole, which will punch out a hole in your model to drain out the resin. And if we go to the very right here, we can see we're selected here. The next one over is actually our supports. And there's quite a few options here. If we click on all plus here, it's just gonna automatically add supports. And that's what it came up with here for this model. And you can adjust all the parameters for that here. So yeah, I'm gonna click on remove all here on the bottom and we'll just go back. And now we're back to the normal slicing. And so here we can see we have the root selected. You can delete it here. And if you have multiple items on the plate, it'll be all in this list here. And you can select all or individually select them and whatnot else. So, and down here we have slice, which will slice the model and tell us how long it's gonna print and how much it's gonna take and things like that. And you can actually preview the layers. Let's see if it'll let me, it's a little laggy. But yeah, you can kind of preview the whole thing here. Now, since we are wireless on this printer, we should be able to send it to network here. But if you want to save it to your thumb drive, you can click here on save. And you guys see, we can choose our disk there, the thumb drive, save it from there. Now what's interesting is I don't think this is the right format. Yeah, it should be the GOO. So yeah, make sure you change that. I think you need to have a GOO behind it, not the CTB, but I'm not 100% sure here, but pretty sure it's this one. So. so yeah, and I can just save it from here and it's gonna write that file to the thumb drive. And if we open it up, we can see it's right here. It says rook.goo. So now we can take the thumb drive to the printer and print it out. Or what we can do is click on this network sending and if we do that, it's gonna look for the printer and look at that, it found it immediately. So here it says Saturn 3 Ultra. And again, for some reason, it's making the CTB file, which maybe that's correct, I'm not sure. Anyways, I'll change it to GOO. And then we're gonna click send. And here it's saying that it's complete and to start printing or not. So if we're ready, we're gonna click yes. And if we're not, we're gonna click no. So yeah, that's pretty much it guys for the slicer here, kind of the basic overview. And when you're done here, you can just click on back and you know, put new models in, slice them and do it all over again. But yeah, hopefully this little quick overview was helpful. Let's go back to the printer and print out our first print. All right, and as you guys can see, it successfully started sending it wirelessly. And we can see a little preview here and some more information. And the first few layers are gonna be long exposures. And then as it goes up, it'll speed up. All right, so it's actually doing something here. It says 0%. Maybe that's just the uh, printing screen. And also you guys can see our carbon filter turned on as the print started. All right, so let's take a closer look as we're printing. Yeah, it looks like there's a little graphic there that shows that it's in progress. 0%, our file, rook.goo, which by the way was the correct format. We got layers printed, five. Layers left, 995. Time that passed since we started, three minutes, and remaining is two hours and 42 minutes. So let's see if same thing happens if we click on it. Okay, there we go, we go back to that first menu. So on the very top, we got settings, pause, stop, and time there. Can we click on it? Oh, okay, you can see either layer or 
the 3D model. So I guess let's go to layer. That seems more interesting. Our percentage there, zero. File name, exposure time, which is 2.5. Bottom exposures was 30 seconds. The print height, where it's at right now, 0 0.450 millimeters. And the overall model height is 50 millimeters. Thousand layers, this is our progress bar down here. See a little tip of it the time passed and the time remaining. So let's click on settings. So here we can control our exposures. So bottom exposure was 35 seconds. And if we click on that, we can put in something else. We also have the normal exposure time, which is two and a half seconds. Number of layers is next over. So the bottom layers were only at two and then transition layers eight. So, and I think, does it go more? Okay, there we go. We can actually scroll down more. Transition type, linear and the thickness there. So yeah, quite, interesting options here and on other we have the amount of resin it'll take I guess so yeah pretty cool so here it looks like we can control the lift rest time and the speeds and also the retract rest times and the speed for that so actually quite detailed here on what you can control straight from the printer while you're printing so yeah and then here we can just go back so yeah really cool again the font is quite small and might be a little hard to read depending on who you are so keep that in mind for this ultra here but other than that pretty awesome and very detailed information here as you're printing and great controls too so we are printing and everything looks good. Every two and a half seconds or so, it goes up and then back down as it goes to the next layer. But let's go ahead and put our cover on and that simply just goes over. And what's great about it is there's a groove that it falls into and it's got a nice tight fit all around. And this helps with keeping the smells in. We do have that activated carbon there, neutralizing on the inside and the lid sealing very well, keeping everything quite minimal on these fumes coming out. And also the cover is gonna help protect from UV rays going in and messing with the resin. So yeah, you wanna keep this on when you're printing, especially if you're in an open environment, like in a lighted room from natural light, as that is what you're trying to protect the resin from. All right, so we're gonna let this thing print our first print which is the Rook but I do want to come back here in just a little bit after we get a few layers in and see if we can pause the system hopefully it brings it up enough so we can see that our print is stuck and everything's good all right so we're like 10% done at hundred and three layers let's go ahead click the pause button confirm and we'll see if it brings it up enough where we can see if everything's good and stuck to the plate and sure enough it is going up actually pretty quick and maybe you guys can see there, we do have the model stuck to the build plate and everything looks pretty good. And this is a great feature to have if you wanna check, make sure everything's going well. So let's click on play and it will continue. And the fans and everything do turn off when you pause it, which is interesting. So yeah, very happy to see that we can pause it and it raises up enough to see. All right, so our first model is complete and it took two hours and 40 minutes, which I think is less than it was predicting. So that's great. Let's confirm and it goes back to the main menu. So for the next part, you're gonna need a few things to work on your model. And especially if you're serious about resin printing, you probably should consider looking into a wash and cure station. But for today, we're gonna keep it pretty simple and I'm just gonna use this pan here to get our model off. And also this little tub of water, which will clean it in. And because this is water washable, we can literally wash it in the water. So let's go ahead and grab some gloves. And I'm just gonna use one glove as I've done this many times and one works out for me just fine. Again, make sure resin doesn't get contact with your skin as it's not good for you. So let's go ahead and loosen the top here and just slide the plate out. And you guys can see our model there. It looks really good. So I'm just gonna set it down. And we got a spatula here. It's not the one that came with the printer, but I can see that we do have a little bit of an elephant foot. So I think we do need to bring our Z axes up a bit with the offset. Well, let's go ahead and see how easy this thing comes off. If I can put a corner in there. There we go. So not too bad, but we did have to hit it a little bit there. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse this out. And I got a towel here to wipe things off. And you guys can see the print came off pretty easily. And if there's nothing on there and everything looks good, we can go ahead and slide this back on onto the printer and tighten the knob as we are gonna continue printing. And so as far as 
cleaning the model, all we're gonna do, since this is water washable, is dunk it in this water and kind of shake it around. And that's gonna shed the extra resin. Now they do include a brush that you can use to kind of brush on the details. And again, guys, if you wanna do this the correct way, it'd be better if you get a wash and cure station where the water would twirl really nicely, and then you can cure it with UV lights once the model completely dries off and that's quite important after you do wash it you want it to let it dry naturally in shaded environment and then you can take it out somewhere near the sun but not direct sunlight as if you go direct sunlight you might dry too fast and start cracking and whatnot else so you want indirect uv rays from the sun and not completely in the sun but yeah just twirling around in there works pretty good and again, on the details, you can use the brush to kind of lightly brush it. Be careful as everything is still somewhat soft before it cures really well. So depending on how much patience you got with this, the better you wash it, the better it will look. Once you're done, we're just going to let it dry. You can slightly damp it off. Just a very slight, light hug with a towel here to grab the moisture or the drops and yeah we're looking pretty good so we're gonna let this dry and we're gonna cure it during the day and we'll also continue printing more prints with the resin we have and then when we're done we're gonna clean it all up and take a closer look at all the models but before we start another print let's go ahead and go to tools manual home the z-axis and we're gonna click on 0.1 millimeters and bring it up two times and hopefully that'll be enough or a little better on our offset there go back and then we're going to click set to zero so now it's going to start 0.2 millimeters higher when it starts printing so a little farther away and that should help a bit but yeah simple as that guys we are ready for our next print Alright guys, so let's talk about the cleaning process. So it's actually quite simple. I already went ahead and cleaned the build plates when I cleaned my last model and you want to do this and check out how well this etching survived here with me scraping the models off. So yeah, very durable finish and it seems to stick very well also. So yeah, you want to clean this as you don't want things to drip down on your screen underneath the tub. So the next thing we want to do is release the bolts. And what we want to do is save the resin that we have left over back into the bottle. And so they include these little strain filters where you can run the resin through back, which doesn't contaminate the rest of your resin that's already in the bottle. So, and to pour it out, we do have a pour spout here on one of the corners. And if you have a funnel, this probably would be easier, but you can just kind of hold it up in the air and run it through there. But yeah, depending on how much patience you got to get every drop out, pour out as much as we can. And now we can close this up and use it for next time, even though we don't have too much left in this bottle. Now, you can use the tank clean feature to solidify whatever is in there, but I don't recommend doing that as it's just easier to wash it off. And if you are going to do that, then leave a thicker layer on the bottom of resins so it doesn't cure patchy and then it's going to be hard to scrape it off. So yeah, not too bad with cleanup, especially with the water washable resin. All right, so we're all washed and a little good trick is use this little brush that comes with the printer and get the corners because you do have resin in there that kind of likes to linger. And another thing to mention is you don't have to clean out your tub every time you're done. It's only if you're changing resin or you're going to print later. So you can just leave the resin in the printer. Make sure you cover it up though. But yeah, simple as that. Everything is clean and ready to go for next time. All right, and so these are all the prints we printed on the Saturn 3 Ultra. So as you guys can see, we printed quite a few prints. So let's start with the first one, which is this root that's normally included with the printer, but I went ahead and started with this. And yeah, you guys can see the bottom. And actually our bed leaves a little pattern there. You kind of see it, which is pretty cool. So first thing to note is how crisp everything is. The letters, extremely good detail. We do have a helix inside. Not sure if you guys can see it, but yeah, and there's some stairs there. Super clean and precise. If we go to the top, here you can see how sharp those words are on top. So 
So yeah, this printer does not disappoint when it comes to the resolution, which makes sense. It is a 12K 3D printer. Now I wanted to print as much detail as I could. So we have a couple busts here to look at. Let's start with this one here and this turned out very nice the only issue is down here i'm not sure if this is me washing it ruined it or what but yeah we even have a little gap there other than that if we go higher we can see a crazy amount of detail guys and this print is pretty small you can see my finger there or my thumb the details are quite incredible this is definitely the sharpest as far as details that i've ever seen if you guys look at his hair there very crisp and very detailed and i do have a hole here as i punched one to drain the resin out and one on the bottom and i did save it and print it separately let's see if we can maybe install it here on the top so you do have to line it up straight which i'm not sure if i have it straight or not but i'm just going to insert it at least a little so it can kind of blend away but yeah anyways great print for this one really impressed the details are incredible so the next print we have is an elf. I forgot to add supports to this as it needed some of them. One for hair going down here, you guys can see it's melted away. And also under her chin, you can see her chin's kind of a little funky there. But other than that, the print looks incredibly good and incredibly detailed. Again, I don't think I've seen this much detail on any other printer, which obviously makes sense as this is a 12K. Just amazing how much detail there is. And everything just looks more crisp and sharp. So yeah, the Saturn 3 Ultra here definitely delivers detail as expected. So here we have a pretty unique print, which is like a cathedral or something, but yeah, it looks great from here up. Again, I'm not sure what I did down here. I think I left it too long in the water or maybe scrubbed it too hard down here. Something happened, but it's not as detailed towards the bottom, but still you can guys see all those little windows and stuff. And I probably didn't wash it as good as I could have, but, but yeah, if we just concentrate on those very fine details, it's incredible how well they came out. All the little ridges, all the polygons, like it was modeled, which is incredible. And even those little points everywhere just are perfect. Again, an extremely impressive print, guys. So yeah, if you're serious about doing some architecture or very small miniatures, this printer will not disappoint. So the next print here we have is quite unique as it is a functional print of an engine. And this is designed by a person called Sunshine. We've got his little logo there. And normally this thing is used for FDM printing to see how good it is. But I went ahead and printed it here to scale on this resin printer and it turned out really good, guys. I was a little close to the build plate, so I had a little bit of an elephant foot to work with. But other than that, everything else literally turned out perfect. And you guys can see all of the pistons turning and everything works beautiful and there's enough tolerance where everything moves very smoothly yeah we can just crank it here by the lever or use this flywheel here on the side so yeah it's a really cool print i was happy to see how well it printed on this resin printer and just gives you ideas of what you can print here and the models you can make so this print here is small and petite, I guess, and there's lots of smooth surfaces, so you guys can see maybe a little better how well the layers go down, and they're practically perfect. It looks very smooth, but at the same time crisp, if that makes any sense. We do have some kind of little layer shift there, but other than that, it really is a great print, and going up to the top here, to the face and ears and antlers, so much detail. And if I could get closer, I would, but it's a little hard with the lens and camera I have. Amazing, amazing detail. And this is all super small. If I bring my finger to here, you can kind of see how small everything actually is. So pretty amazing print and quite detailed. Now the next two prints we'll look at are even more detailed. And we have this Soraya Tech Benchmark test print. And hopefully you guys can see. I didn't wash it so well you can kind of see. Yeah, that's the only thing. I wish I took a little more time to wash them better here. But yeah, you can see that everything prints out beautifully. And if one thing I noticed right away about this printer is everything is just more crisp. Especially the wordings and the letterings, things like that. So, And even our overhang here looks pretty much perfect, I would say. So we do have this little cube here that's stuck on some support. So let's go ahead and break it loose. And this is a see-through. You can, let's see if I can hit it just right. Anyways, if we turn it just right, you can't see right through the box. But yeah, it's really hard to get it just right, but you can kind of see it there sometimes. So 
In any case, it is completely see-through and it's a really, really fine mesh and shows how incredible the detail is on this printer. It has no problems with very fine detail like that. Now we do have something even more fine that I'm not sure if I'll be able to show you, but this is by Ameri Labs and it's a test and this thing is ultra tiny. If we look at this thing, it looks quite incredible. It is extremely detailed. I did mess up some of those little points there on the back end cleaning it, but yeah, other than that guys, I don't think I've ever seen anything more crisp than this. And one thing I noticed is that there's actually numbers on top that I don't think I've ever seen before on any other printer, which is quite incredible to me at least. I'm definitely seeing new things on this print than I've ever seen before and everything is there, which is quite impressive again. So yeah, very detailed and precise. And so for the last print, we have this Eiffel Tower, which by the way is the full height of 260 millimeters, which it had no issue and printed it all out. And this thing actually turned out much better than it usually does. Again, all of the edges and lines and everything are extremely crisp. We did have a little bit of layer peeling right here, but it's quite minor. Everything else is quite solid. As you'd expect, you can see right through it all the way to the top. And even if we get a little closer here, you guys can see it's all see-through, even through that very fine mesh there. So yeah, incredible print extremely detailed and even our railing here is quite strong and robust and obviously all there so amazing print and it's stuck perfect popped right off and <laughs> yeah very successful great eiffel tower and to be honest i didn't expect anything less even though we just used the basic parameters that come with the printer off the slicer no fine tuning whatsoever which will greatly improve the print and we didn't add any kind of anti-aliasing or edge softeners or anything like that so yeah right off the standard profile it it seems to do an excellent job. And also I printed everything in normal mode. You can't print it in fast and then very fast, which would be one third, one fourth of the time, which is quite ridiculous how fast it is, but this printer is capable of the speed. So that'll be something to play around with for sure. The overall build of this printer is quite impressive. Really love the dark theme. 10 inch monochrome LCD screen. That's 12K resolution. 218 by 122 by 260 millimeters of build volume. 4 inch IPS high resolution touchscreen running on Linux operating system with Wi Fi capability. Love the laser etched build plate. Extremely sturdy Z axis with ball screw for the Z lead. It comes with a carbon purifier inside, and this cover seals very nicely, so not much smells. And overall, very enjoyable, easy to use, high resolution resin printer. And if your question is, is 12K better than 8K? From what my eyes can see, yes, everything is a little bit more crisp, but if you do have have an 8k machine should you upgrade to the 12 probably not unless you're looking for that super super fine detail and i love how elegoo has an option for everyone so if you want their best saturn printer it will be the 3 ultra they do also have the 3 which is also 12k and that would be quite interesting to see the differences between them which there is some but for the little extra that this printer has it seems to be worth so hopefully this video was interesting and informative if you did enjoy it hit that like button if you want to pick up this printer or any other ones that Elegoo has, check out the links below. And if you want to see more videos like this, check out my 3D printing playlist. I'm sure you'll find something interesting there. I do have more videos coming up, so stay tuned. And if you made it to the end, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.